Chosen ones, how does it feel knowing those who turned their backs on your suffering are now facing the consequences of their cowardice? Now that your strength has only grown, will you let your voice be heard, exposing the truth they tried to bury? For years the pain has lingered like a storm cloud, heavy and relentless, casting its shadow over every corner of your life. Someone you trusted, someone who should have been your protector or confidant, became the architect of your suffering. This was no simple one-time wound, it was the slow, deliberate erosion of your spirit. Each word, each look, each action from them was a knife, twisting deeper with every passing day. You were left to wonder, why? Why did someone who claimed to love you choose to break you piece by piece, layer by layer? The answer lies not in what you lacked, but in what you possessed. You carry a light so fierce, so unyielding, that it threatens those who live in the shadows of their own insecurities. They saw your strength, your resilience, and instead of celebrating it, they sought to snuff it out. Like a towering oak in a forest of brittle twigs, your presence made them feel small, and rather than seeking to grow alongside you, they opted to tear you down. Their cruelty wasn't random. It was calculated, a desperate attempt to hide their own frailty by making you question your worth. But you never broke. Yes, you stumbled. Yes, you bled. But the fire within you never went out. Even as they chipped away at your confidence, you held on to a quiet, defiant strength. And the more they tried to diminish you, the more you became a reflection of their fears. They hurt you because they couldn't bear to see their own inadequacies in the light of your brilliance. And as the years went on, it became not just about controlling you, but about controlling the narrative. If they could make you doubt yourself, make you feel small, they could continue hiding from the truth of their own inadequacy. Your pain was never about weakness. It was never about you not being enough. It was about someone else being too small to embrace the vastness of who you are. They chose to hurt you because they could not stand to be in the presence of someone who shines so brightly. The truth they feared is the truth you must embrace. Their betrayal was never a reflection of your value. It was a testament to the greatness they could never match. You are still standing, and that is a power they will never possess. You stood there, open and vulnerable, while the people who should have shielded you from harm remained still, silent. They watched unmoved, as someone you loved twisted the knife in your back again and again. Perhaps it was a partner's family, close friends, or those who pretended to care. Maybe it was those who smiled at you, shared a table with you, but did nothing as the wrecking ball of cruelty swung closer to you. They chose silence, and that silence wasn't passive, it was a weapon. Each time they refused to acknowledge your pain, it was like adding weight to the chains that already dragged you down. These enablers, masked by feigned indifference or under the guise of neutrality, were driven by forces darker than you could see at first glance. Some were too blinded by jealousy to confront the truth of your suffering, too bitter in their own lives to extend a hand. Your presence, even in pain, was a threat to them. They saw in you the strength to endure, the courage to face betrayal without crumbling, and that frightened them. To stand up for you would have meant standing in the reflection of their own inadequacies, confronting their own failures and fears. So they did nothing, choosing instead to let you drown in the storm they refused to acknowledge. And what was their reward for turning away? It was the preservation of their fragile peace, a false stability that your suffering made possible. If they admitted your hurt, if they came to your side, the delicate facade of their lives would shatter. They were complicit in your pain, not because they didn't know better, but because acknowledging it would mean admitting that they had the power to change things and chose not to. They chose their comfort over your survival. In that isolation, you began to question everything. Your worth, your sanity, your very existence. How could they not see it? Why didn't anyone intervene? These questions clawed at you in the dead of night, dragging you into the abyss of doubt. You began to wonder if you were the one at fault, if somehow your pain was deserved. But here's the truth. They didn't ignore your suffering because it was invisible. They ignored it because it was undeniable. Their inaction, their cold indifference, was proof of your strength. 
They couldn't bear to witness someone who, despite all efforts to crush them, refused to fall. Their silence was more than complicity. It was a betrayal of the human bond they claimed to share with you. The hurt you carry isn't confined to the shadows of your mind. It's seared into your very being, written in the marks left on your body, the tremors in your hands, the tightness in your chest. Each scar is a testament to the depth of the violence you endured, the physical blows as real and as undeniable as the emotional ones. The abuse wasn't subtle. It wasn't a wound that could be brushed away or rationalized. It was raw, visceral, a force that ripped through you with a brutality that left no room for misunderstanding. But still, they didn't see. Or worse, they chose not to. The enablers, those who stood on the sidelines, dared to shift the blame onto you, as if you had summoned the cruelty upon yourself. They became accomplices in your suffering, twisting the narrative so skillfully that you began to question your own perception of reality. Each time you showed your scars, each time the evidence of your pain was laid bare before them, they turned their gaze elsewhere, pretending that the horror you lived was somehow a fiction you had created. They warped the truth until the lines between victim and perpetrator blurred in their eyes, convincing themselves and trying to convince you that the abuse was something you deserved. Your bruises became accusations in their mouths, as though your body marked by violence was somehow responsible for the violence itself. Every tear, every cry for help, was twisted into proof of your supposed instability, your imagined weakness. They surrounded the abuser like a shield, not out of ignorance, but out of a deliberate choice to uphold the lie that protected their fragile sense of peace. Confronting your truth would have required them to face the abuser's cruelty and their own cowardice, and that was something they could not bear. So they chose the easier path, the path where you were to blame. They fed your abuser's power by affirming the lies that kept you trapped, that told you this was your fault, that you were somehow the cause of your own destruction. And in doing so, they became architects of your isolation. They took your reality and distorted it until even you began to wonder if your pain was real, if your suffering was justified. But make no mistake, the hurt was real, and their denial of it only deepened the wound. The scars, both visible and invisible, stand as proof not only of the abuse itself, but of the deliberate refusal of those around you to acknowledge the truth. They chose the comfort of lies over the discomfort of truth, leaving you to bear the weight of it all. That weight is no longer yours to carry. We created the inner order for chosen ones like you, those who have endured the lies, the betrayal, and the deliberate blindness of others. You've borne the scars, but now it's time to rise beyond the pain. If you've carried the burden of their lies, and you're ready to claim the power of your truth, it's time to join the inner order. The link is in the description below. For those who once stood by in silence, who turned their faces away as you were torn apart, something is shifting. Their guilt is no longer an abstract concept they can ignore. It's become a weight, pressing down on their chest with the force of the years they spent enabling your suffering. It's the nagging reminder that they did nothing when you were crying out, that they let the darkness devour you without lifting a finger. For some, this guilt has begun to unravel their carefully constructed lives. Their ignorance and denial, once a shield from the discomfort of facing the truth, now chokes them. They see it in their reflection, the way their eyes no longer hold the certainty they once did. It's as though they've been marked by the very pain they tried to ignore, and now they cannot escape the consequences. Their lives, once so carefully managed, are fraying at the edges. They feel it in their bones, a karmic reckoning that cannot be dodged. They have begun to see what they refused to see before, that their silence was an act of violence, their inaction a betrayal. But not all of them will allow this guilt to transform them. Some, still gripped by jealousy and spite, cling to their denial like a lifeline. They see the truth, but they refuse to admit it, because doing so would mean confronting their own inadequacies. These enablers are trapped in their own prisons, 
bound by the same fear that kept them silent when you needed them most. To acknowledge their wrongdoings would mean tearing down the fragile ego they've spent years cultivating. They cannot bear the thought that you, the one they watched suffer, have grown stronger in spite of it all, while they remain small, shackled to their envy and resentment. They continue to lash out, refusing to change, because to them, change would mean admitting defeat. They are stuck, frozen in the very moment they chose to turn away from you, and they can go no further. Their refusal to evolve only deepens their bitterness, leaving them to rot in the very jealousy that once fueled their betrayal. They are still bound to the lies they fed themselves, the comforting delusion that it was easier to ignore your suffering than face their own complicity. You, on the other hand, have already transcended them. You've survived, grown, and become something they could never touch. They are now just shadows in your rear view, forever lost in the web of their own making. Your healing begins the moment you decide to sever the ties that bind you to the source of your suffering. The walls of this toxic environment have closed in around you for far too long, each interaction another link in a chain designed to keep you bound, small and controlled. These abusers and their enablers feed on your reactions, drawing strength from the emotional energy they provoke. Every glance, every word exchanged with them is fuel for their chaos, a lifeline to the very power they wield over you. To them, your pain is a mirror for their own inadequacies, and they cling to your suffering like parasites. But the most potent weapon you have is detachment. The moment you stop feeding their hunger for control, they begin to starve. They thrive on your reactions, your anger, your sadness. It's what sustains their fragile ego. When you stop caring about their opinions, or their desperate attempts to keep you tethered, you become untouchable. Their words, once sharp as knives, begin to dull against the armor you forge from indifference. Their chaos swirls around you like a storm, but it no longer finds purchase in your mind. You've built walls within yourself stronger than any they could ever tear down. The power to heal comes not from external validation, but from the strength that has always burned within you. It is your silence, your refusal to engage, that unravels their control. They cannot drag you back into the darkness unless you let them. They cannot make you doubt yourself unless you give them permission. As you remove yourself from their toxic grasp, you'll feel the weight lifting, the fog clearing. It is not an escape, but a reclamation, a reclaiming of the power they tried to steal from you. The more distance you create, the more their influence fades into insignificance, until they are nothing more than ghosts of a past that no longer holds you. You are no longer the victim of their games. Your healing is an act of defiance, a quiet rebellion against everything they try to instill in you. They want you to care, to flinch, to return to the web of their manipulation, but you owe them nothing. The key to your freedom lies in your ability to walk away, not just physically, but emotionally, mentally, spiritually. Let them flail in the storm they created. You are no longer a part of it. You are already miles beyond their reach, and that is your greatest victory. The one who wounded you is not driven by love or empathy, but by the need for control, the relentless hunger for validation. They thrive on manipulation, weaving illusions to make themselves the center of every room, every conversation. Their power comes from the chaos they orchestrate, the way they twist your reactions into weapons they wield with precision. To the outside world, they wear the mask of charm, of competence of the eternal victim. They make themselves the martyr while painting you as the villain, a carefully constructed narrative designed to uphold their fragile ego. To the people around them, they seem flawless, charismatic, and even vulnerable, while you are made to seem unstable, overly sensitive, or even cruel. But you know the truth. You felt the slow erosion of your sanity as they pull strings behind the scenes, setting traps designed to provoke you into responding with anger, frustration, or tears. They lay the groundwork for their betrayal by isolating you, spinning their webs with every whispered word, every calculated action. Their charm is a facade, their empathy a lie. They live for the reactions they can pull from you, each one a victory that justifies their toxic behavior. But you hold the key to dismantling their entire scheme. The moment you stop reacting, 
the moment you refuse to play the role they've scripted for you, their power begins to crumble. Without your emotional energy to feed on, they are left exposed, desperate, and empty. Their strength lies not in who they are, but in how they make you respond. By stripping away your reactions, you strip away their mask, forcing them to confront the hollowness they've been hiding all along. You become the mirror they cannot bear to look into, reflecting their dysfunction back at them in ways they can no longer deny. This infuriates them, of course. They will try every trick, every manipulation to pull you back in, to make you break, to restore the balance of power that kept them in control. But your silence is louder than any words you could ever speak. Your refusal to play their game unravels the very core of their illusion. In your indifference, you become untouchable, leaving them to spiral in the mess they created. Without your reactions to validate their narrative, they are left to face the truth. Their power was never real. It was always borrowed from you. When you refuse to react, you disrupt the very foundation upon which the abuser builds their power. Their strength is rooted in your response, in the way they pull at your emotions like strings to a puppet. But the moment those strings fall limp, their control begins to erode. They push, they prod, seeking any flicker of anger, sadness or fear, because your reactions are the fuel that powers their manipulation. Without it, their efforts fall flat. Their attempts to dominate fizzle out like smoke. This drives them into frustration, and in their desperation to regain control, they will begin to unravel. As the abuser loses their grip, the mask they wear in public begins to crack. Their polished facade, once so convincing to others, starts to slip. They expose themselves not through grand revelations, but in the subtle ways they falter, the frantic attempts to provoke that no longer work. They stumble, and in their rage they make mistakes. The very people who once believed their charm, who were blinded by their charisma, will begin to see the truth. You won't need to prove your story anymore. Their actions will speak louder than any words you could offer. Your strength lies not in confrontation, but in withdrawal. By disengaging emotionally, you take away the power they seek to wield over you. It's not silence born from defeat, but from a place of unshakable resolve. You create a wall they cannot penetrate, an impenetrable fortress where their manipulations fall to dust before reaching you. In this space, their cruelty, their lies, no longer find purchase. They rage against it, clawing for a way back in, but your calm leaves them powerless. And as they spiral in their own frustration, their carefully constructed reality begins to crumble, piece by piece. Eventually, the abuser is left alone with the ruins of the illusion they've built. They will show their true nature to the world, and the weight of their own actions will crush them. You won't have to lift a finger, they will self-destruct under the pressure of their own lies, their own cruelty. Your strength in stepping back is what will expose them. What they fail to understand is that your disengagement is not surrender. It's the ultimate power move. They will fall, not because of what you did, but because of what you refused to do, react. And when they finally crumble, you will walk away free, untouched by the chaos they tried to drag you into. You stand on the other side of the fire now, no longer a victim bound by the chains of betrayal, but a warrior who has emerged from the wreckage stronger, sharper. The power that was taken from you, twisted and distorted to serve others' purposes, is now back in your hands. You owe nothing to those who tried to break you. No explanations, no emotional labor, no more tears. The abuser and their enablers thrive on the energy you once gave them, but by refusing to react, you starve them of the control they crave. Every moment you focus on your own healing, you reclaim what was stolen. You take back your dignity, your peace, and your sense of self. The path ahead may be long, strewn with the remnants of pain, but you are no longer walking it in the shadow of those who sought to diminish you. You are blazing a trail, and in your refusal to bend, your light only grows brighter. This is not about revenge, it is about justice, and the justice lies in your strength, your resilience, your refusal to be defined by the harm inflicted on you. Now let others see what true power looks like. Share your story. Let your voice be a testament to survival, a weapon against silence. Because in telling your truth, 
you remind others of their own strength, and together, you become an unstoppable force. The time has come to reclaim not just your power but your voice. Your story matters. Now let the world hear it.